bit too chilly, need my big coat on. Hey everyone, Jason from Droneworks. On site again for another construction progress visit where we take aerial visuals and collect site survey data to provide the site manager and engineers with the data they need to help keep the project on track. Uh, today we're talking stockpiles. So when we're collecting this survey data, we also uh, can collect the data about stockpiles because they're part of the levels of the ground that we extract from the uh, images taken by the drone. Stockpiles are generally um, assessed regularly as part of the inventory of the site. So we may have a pile of aggregate that's been imported that needs to be used to fill the site to the current level. We may have some waste that needs to be exported from the site which costs to be taken away. And so it's important that the site manager knows exactly what volume they have, what they're dealing with, so that they can manage their inventory uh, correctly in order to uh, keep the project running smoothly. So we can either cover the whole site with the drone or just cover the stockpile in general. But either way, GCPs are used as we've talked about in my previous video. So we're going to jump into the PC now, have a look at this stockpile behind me and see if uh, show you how we can determine the volume. I'll see you in the computer. Okay, so we're back at the office now. I'm going to talk about how do we extract volumetric and useful site data from the drone imagery. So how do we do it with the drone? So after the standard planning and risk assessment, which we do from the office, we arrive on site and conduct, conduct our on-site um, assessment. We'll place out ground control, so you can see here the green crosses are the various ground controls uh, points we've recorded using an RTK receiver. And once the GCPs are positioned and surveyed, the drone operator can then fly the drone and map the entire site automatically uh, by taking multiple pictures. And the drone is automated to cover the whole site, not just the stockpile. So we have a complete snapshot of the site data, not just the stockpile that we're interested in, although you can just do the stockpile if you wanted. So for this site, we flew at 45 meters above ground level. This gave us a, a GSD of uh, around 1.2 centimeters per pixel. So we took up around 1100 images. It was all collected in under an hour. Uh, and the images have now been processed, tied into the GCPs using the photogrammetry software. And the outputs are used to create this model that you see here. So we've got the point cloud, the author mosaic, which is basically a detailed 2D Google map where every pixel has an XYZ coordinate, a terrain model and a surface model. So the drone survey uh, of this site or any site will generate hundreds of data points per square meter. This means that we get a much richer data set than traditional methods, which factors in all of the stockpile surface. So if you see on this one here, this stockpile is not quite uniform. We've got some divots here where um, material has been extracted. So all those irregularities are captured um, into the data set that we're working with. Uh, so to estimate the volume here, using the outputs we're viewing the terrain, each coordinate has an XYZ position. So if you look down here, you can see as I move the cursor, the coordinate of this cursor is also moving, including the height, which is the Z axis. Uh, so first we need to tell the software, where is the base of the stockpile that we're interested in? Exactly the same way as a surveyor will do it. So here we're in virtual surveyor, which has got some really useful tools to make this nice and easy. So we're going to draw our baseline. It should try and work out the base for us to speed things up. So there we go. So now we've got our boundary of the, uh, the base of the stockpile. We now uh, can use that boundary for the software to extract the height information from the thousands of data points that are above the stockpile layers uh, and provide cut and fill calculations. So if we um, select our boundary, 
triangulate that boundary which creates a surface the software can then calculate the volume for us and here you can see now it's given us a total volume a cut volume and a fill volume so cut is the amount of material we need to extract from the pile to level the area with the surrounding ground the fill is the volume of material we'd need to add to a hole or a trench to level the area with the surrounding ground so volume e equals cut minus fill so here you can see we've got uh, around 1800 meters cubed of, uh, of volume in the stockpile the colors just denote the height of the stockpile so yellow is lower red is a higher elevation based on the coordinates of the pixels that make up the stockpile so uh, now we've got that we can extract it to CAD um, we can give the site engineers a tin so that they can then work with the data in a format that they're familiar with and due to the, the speed and ease of this process we can repeat it as often as required so we can collect multiple data sets of a project let's say weekly or bi-weekly um, and we can use that to compare one visit against the next um, track the say the usage of this stockpile or even track the uh, levels on the on the whole site we can overlay CAD drawings compare it to design against as is uh, and this this is all down to giving more information to the site manager and site engineers to allow them to keep projects uh, on track. If we wanted to, just as a, another example, but this is only quick, um, a, a land surveyor would say normally uh, roam this site collecting uh, a point grid at say that's say five or ten meter spacing which would involve them walking along this ground every five meters collecting a data point with our RTK receiver. We can do that quite quickly um, in the software now because every point on here has an XYZ co coordinate. Now normally we would clean this data because if we zoom in there's multiple trees and uh, small elevations in the ground so we'd spend some time cleaning that up to make sure we've got accurate data. But if we uh, we can generate the point grid automatically this only takes a few minutes and here now you can see all the data points um, where there are any changes in elevation around the site we can then use those to create a tin a surface model and again give that to the, uh, the surveyor or site engineer so you can see now how using this software we can get the drone data into a format the site engineers and surveyors are used to working with we can work closely together to make sure uh, the data is accurate and gives them all the information that they need but more importantly it saves them time because we've collected the data quite quickly we've got more data than would normally be available and uh, all this is all uh, more data is just good for um, for keeping track of things so uh, that's it for now as just a quick example um, but just to show you the power of um, of the drone data that we've collected the speed and the the efficiencies that it brings along with the extra data um, that uh, and, and with that more data is uh, is more knowledge to keep our projects on track so thanks and we'll see you next time